Hello and welcome as we start this new section on AWS monitoring services. So over here in the Orion papers, make sure that you're on the account and services layer and let's drill down into our account and then into monitoring. In this lesson, we're going to focus on CloudWatch, which is going to be the primary monitoring service of AWS. So before I go and talk about exactly what's going on here in this particular diagram, let's first get a good understanding of some CloudWatch essentials. Now also over here in the AWS console, we can find CloudWatch under management tools right here under CloudWatch. So back over to the Orion papers, what CloudWatch is, is CloudWatch is used to monitor AWS services such as EC2, Elastic Load Balancing, and S3. You monitor your environment by configuring and viewing CloudWatch metrics. Metrics are specific to each AWS service or resource and include such metrics as for EC2 per instance metrics, you can monitor CPU utilization or CPU credit usage. For S3, some examples are number of objects in a bucket or the bucket size in bytes of a bucket. For elastic load balancing, some examples are the request count to the elastic load balancer and any unhealthy hosts that are currently associated with the elastic load balancer. Now, it's also important to understand that there is detailed versus basic level of monitoring. With basic level monitoring, data is available automatically in five minute periods at no charge. So it will update the metric with new information every five minutes. For detailed, and this costs a little bit extra, you can actually drill down and get your metrics updated in one minute periods. CloudWatch alarms can also be created to trigger alerts or other actions in your AWS account, such as an SNS topic. And these are all based on thresholds you set on your CloudWatch metrics. Autoscaling, as we should note at this point, heavily utilizes CloudWatch, relying on thresholds and alarms to trigger the addition or removal of instances from an autoscaling group. So over here in the AWS console, you will see that I already have some metrics set up by default because I just have some services running on my AWS account, right? So I have an S3 bucket with some objects in it. I have EC2 instances running with an elastic load balancer. And I have auto scaling set up, which we actually see here is two auto scaling alarms that I set up previously in this course. But over here, let's actually click on metrics first and let's just view what is available here. So you will only see metrics available here for any resources that you currently have provisioned in your account. So if you don't have any EC2 instances provisioned in your account, you won't see EC2 listed here. But you can see here that I have EBS volumes in my account. I have Elastic Load Balancer in my account. Same thing with SNS, EC2, and S3. Now if I click on EC2 and then I can drill down to per instance metrics, I can view all the metrics that are available for the EC2 instances that I have running and even EC2 instances that I have deleted as AWS will save and allow you to view that data for at least a couple of weeks. But everything is broken down on a per instance level so you can see the instance ID here and then it will list the metrics or the standard metrics that are available. I'll get into the differences between standard and custom metrics in a few minutes. But we can look at something like for this particular instance, our dev EC2 instance, we can look at the CPU utilization. So we can see over the specified time, which is currently set here as one hour, we can see the CPU utilization for this instance over the last hour. We can also see over the last day or over the last three days or over the last week. And again, this will be listed in five minute increments. If you want one minute increments, you will have to enable detailed monitoring, which does cost a little bit extra. So you can always view any of the available metrics for any of your provision resources just by coming to CloudWatch, clicking on metrics, viewing all, and then viewing the metrics that are currently available for you to view. So now that we have a good understanding of what CloudWatch is, let's jump back out here and take a look at this diagram and let me explain what's going on. So here we have our AWS account i.e. our production account. And in our account, we have a VPC and we have services running in the VPC like EC2 instances, EBS storage, auto scaling, elastic load balancing. We also may have an S3 bucket filled with objects. And what CloudWatch does is CloudWatch, as you see here, I kind of have it as a pink highlight over the entire account is it allows us to monitor all of these things. So it's kind of like an umbrella that wraps itself around our entire account because it is fully integrated with all of these services. And we can use CloudWatch to monitor and keep track of all of these services. Now, one of the nice things that's great about CloudWatch is we can set up CloudWatch alarms and CloudWatch alarms 
based on metrics for any of the services that we have running our account can trigger events like an SNS topic and send notifications to us as AWS users. So let's take a closer look at CloudWatch alarms. So CloudWatch alarms allow you or the system administrator to be notified when certain defined thresholds are met on CloudWatch metrics. For example, you can set up an alarm to be triggered whenever the CPU utilization metric on an EC2 instance goes above, say, 70% or 50%, whatever you want to set the threshold to be. Alarms can also be used to trigger other events in AWS, like publishing to an SNS topic or triggering auto-scaling. So if you remember back when we set up auto-scaling in our networking section, we actually set up CloudWatch alarms as part of that, which would then trigger either to increase or decrease the amount of instances running on our application. And we generally did that using the metric CPU utilization and setting something like if CPU utilization goes above 80%, provision an additional EC2 instance into our application, and if average CPU utilization dropped below 40%, remove an EC2 instance from our application. So that monitoring and the triggering of that auto-scaling is all done with CloudWatch integration. So with that all in mind, let's take a look specifically at CloudWatch EC2 monitoring, because there are some things that we need to specifically know here for the AWS CSA exam. And over here, I'm actually gonna open up a new tab and go to EC2. And here I will select one of my EC2 instances and I wanna now select status checks because there are two types of status checks that we need to know and need to know also how to handle issues with these status checks and how to solve those issues. So first thing that we need to know is that it is actually CloudWatch on the back end that is monitoring these system checks and also providing us with these EC2 instance specific metrics right here in the EC2 console. See, it says right here, CloudWatch alarms, and this is our CloudWatch metrics. So back to status checks, there's two types of status checks or two types of status check errors that we need to know. One is system status checks and the other is instance status checks. Now it's very important to understand these two and understand how to solve them for the CSA exam. So system status checks, which is this one here, and these are things that are outside of our control, but something we can still attempt to fix. And system status checks occur due to loss of network connectivity, loss of system power, software issues on the physical host, hardware issues on the physical host. So this is issues with the actual AWS physical hardware or actual AWS networking infrastructure. Again, it's not stuff that we can control. It's stuff that happens on the AWS side. Now, how do we solve this issue if the system status check fails during the provisioning or after we create an EC2 instance? Well, generally, stopping and restarting the instance will fix this issue. It's because that this causes the instance to launch on a different physical hardware device. So remember, each EC2 instance is just a virtual machine. It's running on actual hardware, but each time that you start and stop an EC2 instance, AWS will launch that EC2 instance on actually a different set of hardware in their data center. So if there's an issue with the actual host system itself, just the mere fact of stopping and restarting the instance will cause AWS to provision your EC2 instance on a different piece of hardware in their data center. So that will generally fix that type of issue. The second is an instance status check. So these are issues that are, arise around the software that we decide to place on our EC2 instance. So it is something that we actually do control. Now, the one thing that we actually don't control is a failed system status check. So we can have an instance status check fail because the system status check failed. However, there are many other reasons why we may have an instance status check, and that is one from a misconfigured network or startup configuration, exhausted memory, corrupted file system, incompatible kernel. So all the various things that we may do to an AMI or to the underlying operating system for our EC2 instance. So we can solve this by generally just giving it a reboot. That can solve a lot of the issues sometimes, but also we may need to go in and solve the file system configuration issue itself. Now, it's also important to remember that EC2 instances themselves can easily be thrown away and just reprovisioned. So if we ever have a major issue with a particular EC2 instance and we cannot get the status check to pass after going in and trying to fix the underlying software issue, we can always just provision our software or our fixed software on a new EC2 instance. Now, moving over to monitoring, 
It is important to understand that by default, CloudWatch will automatically monitor metrics that can be viewed at the host level, not the software level, such as CPU utilization, network in and out, CPU credit balance, and CPU credit usage. So all of the default CloudWatch metrics are listed here for EC2. And these are all metrics that can be viewed at the host level. So again, CPU, network usage, disk read writes, things that AWS can monitor without having to access the operating system running on the EC2 instance. Now, other OS level metrics require a third party script, which is a Perl script to be installed in order for CloudWatch to properly monitor them. And that Perl script is provided by AWS. But this includes things on the OS level like memory utilization, memory used and memory available, or disk swap utilization, disk space utilization, disk space used or disk space available. These are things that CloudWatch will need OS level access for in order to monitor. And you actually have to manually set that up. Now, it's very important for the CSA exam to know the difference between the default or the host level metrics that are allowed for EC2 and the ones that require custom scripts. Now, this is much more heavily relied upon on the SysOps exam, but it is something that you do need to know for the CSA exam. Now, in terms of alarm, let's say that we want to create a particular alarm. There are several ways that we can do that. So we want to create an alarm based on metrics for, say, our EC2 instance that will either trigger auto scaling, which we've covered in the past, or say trigger an SNS topic to send a notification to our system administrator. Well, we can either do that right here in the EC2 console by clicking on create alarm, or we can go back to the CloudWatch console and click here on alarms. Now we want to go to then create an alarm and let's stick with the same EC2 instance per metric per instance metrics. And what we can do here is we can select any one of our EC2 instances and then select the specific metric that we want to set an alarm for. So let's choose CPU utilization for our dev EC2 EC2 instance. Clicking next here, we can now give our alarm a name and a description, but what's most important is what we're going to set the threshold as. So here we can set the thresholds. This is CPU utilization is greater than or equal to, and we can select the two less than or equal to, or just greater than or less than, let's say greater than or equal to here, 70%. For one consecutive period or two consecutive periods or three consecutive periods, whatever you want to set it for, and the period time frame is set down here, and we can change that between one minute to one day. Then, what we want to focus on is what is the action? What is going to occur when CPU utilization rises above 70% or equal to 70% in this case? What action is then going to take? Well, it's going to trigger an alarm and we want to trigger the alarm based on the state of the alarm. So is the state of the alarm alarm? Is it okay? Meaning that is it under the threshold or is it above the threshold or is it just the state insufficient, meaning that the CloudWatch system can't get the information required to either give an okay or alarm state on the actual alarm itself. Let's say that we wanna set the state as alarm, meaning it is above the threshold that we set. What do we then want to happen? Well, we can send notifications to, let's say an SNS topic. So these are some SNS topics that I've already set up in this account and used in previous lessons in this course. So let's say that we want to send it to the SNS example. So we then have our email here, lasnsexample at gmail.com. So now that anytime this EC2 instance CPU utilization goes above 70%, it will trigger an alarm and that alarm will trigger an SNS topic. So we can just look right at our diagram over here. We have our EC2 instance. CloudWatch is monitoring the EC2 instance. We have a metric threshold set. When that threshold is set, an alarm is triggered. That alarm triggers an SNS topic and that SNS topic will send us a notification. Now, what I would probably wanna do is set up a specific SNS topic or a specific SNS notification type for this particular alarm so that I get the proper information. But using this as an example works just the same. And just as a side note, insufficient can also mean that the alarm that you have set up just hasn't had enough time yet, because remember, you have to wait at least five minutes. It just doesn't have enough time yet to gather the proper information to give the alarm a status of either alarm or okay. So that is a summary of CloudWatch and how you use it to monitor resources within your AWS environment, and more specifically, some of the exact things that you do need to know for the CSA exam. And with that, we'll conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.